Welcome to the math record. This video will be the second part of the ICT and Regional 2020 Division AA Geometry, which I'll be covering questions 9 and 11. Okay, number 9. Consider right triangles with integer side lengths. A is the set of right triangles in the 3, 4, 5, having perimeters less than 100. B is the set of right triangles for the 5, 12, 13, which is less than 100. And C is the 8, 15, 17, less than 100. Two of the sets are chosen at random, and one is chosen from each of these sets. Determine the probability that the chosen triangles have a common side length. Okay, so we have three sets, A, B, and C. So we have A, we have B, and we have C. Okay, for A, we have the 3, 4, 5. Our B is the 5, 12, 13. And our C is the 8, 15, 17. Okay, so it has to be less than 100, so let's just add them up. 3 plus 4 plus 5, that's 7, that's 12. 12 be, can be scaled up by 8 before it's less than 100, so this is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. And then from the, th and then the 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. And then 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 30. 28 and 32. Okay, now for the Bs, 5, 12, and 13, add them up. So that's 17, that's 30, which means it can be scaled by 3 before it goes over 100. So this is um, 10, 24, and 26, and then 15, 36, and 39. So it just has three of them. Now C, 8, 15, 17, so that's 23 plus 17, which is uh, 40. So this could be scaled up twice. So this is 16, 30, and 34. And that's it. Because any single other triangles uh, for the higher than these is going to um, have parameters over 100. So now we just choose two groups. So A and B, and then A and C, and then B and C. So there's three groups. So if we had to choose one of them, the probability is one third. So there's three groups. So each of them has probability of one third. So the first one is A and B. So how many groups work for A and B? So let's think about the three, four, five. How many work with the three, four, and five? So there's one, and that's it. And then 6, 8, 10. Well, there's one for the 10, 24, 26. The 9, 12, 15. So 9, there's 12. There's 15, so there's 2. And then the 12, 16, 20. 12 here, there's no 16s and no 20s, so there's one here. 15, 20, 25. So no fit, there's one 15s, no 20, and no 25, so there's one. And then 8, 24, 30, so, I mean 18, 24, 30, uh, no 18s, 1, 24 here, and no 30s. A, 21, 28, 35, no 21s, no 28s, and no 35s. Okay, so that one has nothing. And then 24, 32, 40, there's 24 here, there's no 32s and no 40s, so there's only one. Okay. So that's the total amount of combinations that work. How many combinations are there in total? Well, there's 8 here and there's 3 here. So 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, now let's work on the next one, which is A and C. So I'm just going to use this one because I don't want to test all 8. So we're just going to test 2 here. So 8, 15, 17. So there's 1, 8 here. There's a 15 here. So that's 2. So then 8, 15, 17. And there's another one here. So that's 3. And basically every single number high is higher than that. So there's only three. So three for that. And then the 16, 30, 34. So 16s, there's one. And then 30, there's another one. So that's two. And 34s, and there's no 34s. So there has two here. And that's over a total of eight times two, which is 16. Okay. And now the final one, which is B and C. So 5, 12, 13. So 5, 12, and 13. There's none here. And then we have 10, 24, 26. Uh, there's no 24s. There's no 10s. There's no 26s either. And then the 15, 36, 39. So there's one 15 here, no 36, and no 39s. So we only have one that works out of a 3 times a um, 2, which is 6. So now let's just do some math. So you just use your calculator. 
So 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's uh, 8 over 24. 8 over 24 is 1 third. So 1 third times this 1 third is 1 ninth. And then this one is 5 over 16. So times that 1 third is equal to 5 over 48. And then this is just 1 18th. And then you just add those probabilities together to get our total probability. So 1 ninth plus 5 over 48 plus 1 over 18. And you should get 13 over 48. And that is our answer for number 9, which is just basically a bunch of trial and error. Okay, number 11. Square ABCD and coplanar equal our triangle CDE, share side length CD, and E is not in the interior is not in the interior of the square. So it's basically just describing this picture. And they said that uh, the square of EFGH has a side length of 9, and find the exact sum of the area of the smallest square and the equilateral triangle. Okay, and it's in this form, and then basically we add the coefficients. So we're just going to draw a general picture of how this looks. So let's say something like this. So this might take a while because trying to make one that's kind of super precise is really difficult. Maybe a little bit more. Eh, probably. And then we have an equilateral triangle. A little bit too much. And a bit bigger. Okay, and I'm just gonna extend this out. It's it's fine. It's also because I'm lazy. So just just imagine that it's an equilateral triangle that's touching it, like this picture. I just can't draw it really precisely. So what we have is we need to find a length that they both have common in, and that's basically this this diagonal. So it's obvious it's the picture that I scaled up isn't really that great, but basically this is all 90 degrees. So both of these are 90. So and this is 90. So we know that the side length of the big triangle is 9. So let's just use some length. So let's say this length to this length is x. So if that length is x, that means since this is made, this side is equal to this side, and this is 90 degrees, that means both of these are 45. So if we split it right here for 90, that means this is 45. So using that idea, since this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, then we just divide by the hypotenuse by a square root 2 to get our side length. So x divided by square root 2, that is equal to x square root 2 over 2. So this is also x square root 2 over 2, because this is a 45, 45, 90. So this is kind of splits it in half, then this is also x squared 2 over 2. So adding that together, that means the side length of our square is x squared 2. That means our length right here, which is basically just one of the side length, just moved over, is x squared 2. Now, what's this length? Well, this length, we know that the equilateral triangle is x squared 2 for its length, because it's sharing it right here, that I drew really badly in. Um, Opposite of the 60 degrees, because this is 90 tri uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, opposite of the 60 is multiplying the hypotenuse by square root 3 over 2. So x square root 2 times square root 3 over 2 is x squared 6 over 2. And now we have the three lengths here, here, and here. So let's add them together to get our total diagonal. So that is, I'll just write it right here. So we have x square root 2, I mean x square root 2 over 2 plus x um, squared 2, plus x squared 6 over 2, and that's equal to this entire diagonal. So this is a 45, 49, 90 triangle, because that's just half of a square. So that means since the side length is 9 to get our hypotenuse, we multiply it by square 2. So that is equal to, so this entire length, which add up to diagonal, is just 9 squared 2. Okay. And we need to find the areas of our square and our equilateral triangle. So our area of our square is x square root 2 squared. So that's just 2 squ x squared. And then the area of our equilateral triangle is its plus our side length squared, which is x square root 2 squared times square root 3 over 4. That's just the general formula. So what is this? Um, what, is, what is basically this uh, simplified? Well, that's 2x squared times square root 3 divided by 4. So that's just x squared times square root 3 over 2. So that's 2 
plus x square root 3 over 2. Okay, so we need to find x in this equation, and then we need to plug it into this. Okay, so let's delete this because now it's going to get kind of messy. And we'll put this over here. And I'll just move this measurement because that's what we're looking for over here. Okay, so I noticed that there's a square root 2, square root 2, and square root 6, which is all divisible by square root 2. So just divide by square root 2 from both sides. So that's just uh, 1 half x plus x plus um, square root 3 over 2x. So that gives us that 9 is equal to 1 half plus 1, which is 3 over 2. And then plus the square root 3, because that's over 2 also, times x. So that means 9 times 2 over 3 plus square root 3 equals x. So we just need to simplify this part. So all we technically just need to do is multiply by 3 minus square root 3. So 3 minus square root 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, square root 3 times negative square root 3 is 3, so 9 minus 3 is 6, so this bottom part is 6. Cancel out the 3 and the 2 here, so make cancel out the 6, so we have a 3 here. So that means our x is equal to 3 times a 3 minus a square root 3. But we don't need x, we need x squared. So squaring this, we get uh, 3 squared is 9. And then 3 squared plus square root 3 squared, that's 9 plus 3, which is 12. And then 3 times 1 times negative 1 is negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 squared 3. Okay, so that's where our x squared is. 9 times 12 minus 6 squared 3 in that parentheses. And now we need to solve for this. Oh, sorry, this was x squared. And um, distribute out our x squared. So we get 2 plus square root 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 4 plus square root 3 over 2. So it's just plug in your 9 into your x squared, and we'll get our answer. So we have 9 times 12 minus 6 square root 3 times 4 plus square root 3 over, oh sorry, plus square root 3 over 2. So uh, let's first just cancel out the even so it makes this easier. So this makes a 6, and this makes a 3. So this is 9 times 6 minus square, times 3 square root 3 times 4 plus square root 3. So 6 times 4 is 24. It's 3, negative 3 square root 3 times square root 3, that is equal to 9. So 24 minus a 9 is a 15. And then 6 times square root 3, that's 6 square root 3. Negative 3, negative 3 squared 3 times 4 is negative 12. So 6 minus 12, negative 12, is, 6 minus 12, I mean, sorry, is equal to minus 6 squared 3. And then we still have that 9. So distribute this out. So 9 times 15, that's 90, that's 45. So that's 135 minus 54 squared 3. So 135 is our K, our negative 54 is our W, and our P is 3. So add them together. So that's negative 51 plus our 135. So that is 84. And that's our answer for number 11. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the third part of the math record.